Hello, how's it going? Test, test, let's see. Um, I think it's time for us to work on a project. Why not? It's a good idea, good way to practice. The number one difference between um, hobby and serious projects in game development is the serious projects are planned out ahead of time. So let's try to plan this out now. I want to make a project which uses um, transformations Whoops, transformations um, and models. And um, let's just go um, colors and no textures. So we'll go um, no textures and also no lighting. So let's just come up with a simple project which uses this sort of feature set. You may remember the, um, the old Vaporwave, what is it? Cyberwave, cyberpunk, anyway, um, aesthetics, which I quite enjoy. Um, so let's try to make a kind of Space Invaders um, game, which has that, not quite Space Invaders. Imagine, if you will, we have a grid which kind of extends out to infinity and we'll have this kind of infinity grid lines and some some mountains so there's a, like a mountain range and a I don't know like a, a sun of some kind um, and we have kind of a A spaceship and that's flying around it's like an infinite drive sort of thing like an infinite flight and um, at the start of the game the spaceship kind of pops down into place and then randomly some enemies will pop down into place as well use ufos enemies pop down into place and the spaceship can shoot and the enemies can shoot the enemies can also, maybe they can move side to side a little bit. Of course, the spaceship can move side to side. And we will also have these kind of power-ups. So at the moment, we don't have overlays. So we can't put like a health bar on the screen or something. Um, but let's still have power-ups and a health system. And after, okay, so these things fall onto screen. If we shoot them, they can also topple off of screen. And same thing with the player. If the player loses health too much, the player topples off of screen as well, and the game is over. Let's just restart the game in that case. So we'll start with our basic components. We have um, the player. and the enemy power-ups bullets okay so um well the player and the enemy and the power-up and the bullets what do they have in common? They kind of have um, positions and they have rotations and they're also going to have, I guess, velocity. So these are like attributes of each of these things. A player has these, an enemy has these. Um, a power-up has these, but a player has extra things as well. So a player and enemies also have um, health. And 
and there are some things we can do. So um, we have kind of we have kind of a a state that both of them have. They can either be um, falling onto the screen, um, stable. Maybe turning and falling off. And then um, finally, they will both have kind of an update function. So the player and the enemy kind of are the same type and we can abstract this out into a I guess a um, simple component which has all of this behavior so it has um, for its variables it has position if I can spell Euler's Like a state that it's in and health something like that okay so the player and the enemy both have that now bullets and power-ups they simply have a position they don't have oilers, they do have velocity. And that's about it, right? They don't really have anything else. Um, same with the bullet. It has a position. And a velocity. So maybe we were a little... A little gung ho here. Let's call this a um, a sentient component, I guess, because it can think. It has its own behavior. It lives. It dies. Um, and these other ones, we'll call them simple components. And for now. I'm actually going to keep these two separate. I'm not going to do inheritance um, just to keep it a little bit simpler because because um, the sentient component and the simple component will basically have different update functions. And um, yeah, okay. Sometimes simpler is better, is better, especially with a small project like this. So now let's look at the scene which will kind of manage all of these sets. So I'll have a scene. And a scene will have a player. And the type of the player is the um, sentient component. And we'll have a um, set of, what is it? What am I thinking? Set of enemies, and that will be an array of sentient components. And uh, we'll also have a set of bullets, which is an array of simple components. and a set of power-ups. Which again, is a set of simple components. Okay. So uh, what else do we have? Well, the scene has an update loop. And the update loop 
will um, what do we want to do? We want to make uh, projectiles, and then we want to. handle any collisions between projectiles and objects where the bullets are hitting um, UFOs, where the bullets are hitting um, players, that's fine. Then we want to, uh, well, destroying things will be within the handle collisions and destroying power-ups that will also be within handle collisions. So maybe we want to Update movement for all of, our, all of our movable objects, and then we probably want to do that first and then handle collisions. Now, no, technically there's no reason to do one ahead of the other, but this just seems a little more logical. And maybe we should even be doing this first. I don't know, this is just blackboarding. So in addition to this, we also want to be able to um, we also want to move player um, function, and we want a player shoot function. This is where we realize that we need some more parameters for the sentient component. Because if I just keep hitting space by the play, it's just gonna keep um, gonna keep shooting. So we want something like um, can shoot, whether it's reloading and um, the time left on a reload. Okay. Then we want to be able to control the rate of fire for um, the enemy. And I'm going to do this within the scene. So the scene will also have some parameters um, in addition to this, and that is the spawn rate for enemies, the spawn rate for uh, power-ups, and the shoot rate for enemies, which we're going to, maybe we can use these things as more like probabilities than rates, but effectively they are rates. Okay, so I think that's the core logic. I mean, there are a few other things here, um, but that's the core, the core logic. Um, other bits of behavior, I think we're just going to work this out as we go. So, um, for instance, the movement of the objects, whether they are falling onto screen, falling off of screen, will handle that in this kind of update function. And we'll just work that out as we go. But it's really important to have these basic components kind of good to go. At least for a quick, for a quick overarching session. All right. So Perhaps you could even um, start having a go at this. And um, anyway, in the next video in this series, in the next video in this series, we will start um, implementing this. Okay. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.